I'm Alex Reddy, and this is my colleague, Will Shemalewski. And we're graduate students here at the University of Texas at Austin in the research group of Professor Buddy Mullins. And we're delighted to talk to you today about our recent perspective article in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters about small polarons and metal oxides. In our research group, we're really interested in solar energy. But unfortunately for us, the sun goes down, and so we need a way to store that energy so we can use it on demand. One way to do this is to convert solar energy into chemical fuels using a photoelectrochemical cell. Example processes include splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen or reducing CO2. Here we have a beaker of water that we want to split into hydrogen and oxygen. We add two electrodes, one of which is a semiconductor. When we shine sunlight on the semiconductor, we generate charge. And we can use that charge to generate oxygen over here and hydrogen over here. So this semiconducting electrode has to do everything that a solar cell material would have to do, as well as being stable in water. We'd love to use metal oxides for this process. Metal oxides are effectively rocks, so they're stable and potentially cheap. Two recent materials that have emerged as champions are iron oxide and bismuth vanadate. And we've grown thin films of these in our lab before, and they perform pretty well. But unfortunately, they're limited by poor charge transport. This is because when you add charge carriers to these materials, they're surrounded by other charged ions that can act to trap the carrier. This is called a small polaron. The charge plus the distortion of the ions is the polaron. And if the trapping is very strong, we term it a small polaron. These carriers move very slowly and require thermal energy to hop through the material. This is very different to the situation in conventional semiconductors, like silicon or germanium, where charges effectively run wild and free. We got started down this research direction uh, by studying that yellow material, bismuth vanadate. We really wanted to know how electrons move through this material and how fast they move. It's called the drift mobility. How fast they move is actually a really important parameter uh, in any electronic material. And in bismuth vanadate, we just didn't even know what it was. It had never been measured. The way you measure this in a conventional semiconductor is to do a Hall effect experiment. In this experiment, we flow current through our sample and apply a magnetic field. The magnetic field deflects the electrons, and we measure this as a voltage across the sample. This voltage can be related to the drift mobility in classical semiconductors. So in the case of bismuth vanadate, we did everything that you're supposed to do. Uh, we measured the conductivity and the Hall effect as functions of temperature. And we published a paper on it uh, where we reported the Hall mobility as the drift mobility. It turns out that's wrong. Interestingly, in the small polaron case, the Hall voltage is actually impacted by the hopping geometry and local orbital overlap. And it cannot be used to determine the drift mobility directly. So if there's one take home message from this entire study, is that you can't use the Hall effect to directly determine the drift mobility in these materials. In summary, metal oxides are very promising photoanodes for photoelectrochemical water splitting. Unfortunately, they are held back by small polarons. Getting a better understanding of how these form and move through the material should enable us to increase the efficiency of this process. You can learn all about small polarons as well as read recent research on iron oxide and bismuth vanadate in our recent perspective article. Thank you for watching. really hope is that you found what you're looking, looking for! for!